for years now, I think the lines of business have been focused on their product convergence story right. Right, within each line of business. I think you could even you know, just kind of really go across the globe and look at that. Last year, we made a major investment also in kind of just the foundational components, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it does seem like we're at a point now where the business really needs to start driving the technology and saying, you know, where does this make sense to put together and stitch the Absolutely. different applications yes. together? Yeah. Exactly. So we don't do it for the sake of doing it, but right. for the sake of tech. I mean, what's yeah. the, at the end of the day, what value will the customer get, right? Right. And if they don't get a whole lot of value out of yeah. it, then why we're doing it, right? So I think right. that makes a lot of sense, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. 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 I think execution is a key, right? right? Like, you know, we we you know we have to continue executing, right, tar- against the goal, right? And mm-hmm. so we have this vision 2025, right? And, you know, how do we, we have to make sure as a team, engineering or even outside of engineering organization, we're very hyper-focused on execution, right? right? And I think then it becomes really exciting because then we can do things that we couldn't do before, right? That's right. Yeah, yep, for sure. It's, it's, it's difficult if things are running on a, a specific server, uh, you know, scaling by server, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but this is poising, setting us up for the um, opportunity to be able to go to a more um, software as a service model across yeah. the board. And we have a lot of that actually already, right? Yeah. So if you look yeah. at different products, you know, we have products that have been SaaS for Really oh, yeah. long, time, yeah, long time, multi-tenant cloud. And we have some that you kind of, you, you mentioned it's a journey, right? So some, mm-hmm. you know, we're working on getting components out of the store, right? Because that's, right. that's you know, that's the right thing to do. And actually customers are asking us, hey, why don't you handle this that's right. cloud yeah. infrastructure for me? Why don't you handle managing these applications? We have plenty of other work to do, right? That's right. And yep. so, you know, that's based on, based on customer demand, right? And what you guys are doing is essentially creating big data solutions, right, uh, for our business, for our customers. But you're not doing it where you're reinventing the wheel, right? You're using public cloud like AWS, right, mm-hmm. so you can go faster and you can basically leverage what Amazon's has already done, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's kind of important to talk about the fact that, you know, cloud is here, right? All yeah. our customers see it. And, and we've been, a, actually, we've been a cloud company for, for a long time, for right? For a very long time, that's uh, right. That's right. And so I, let's touch on that a little bit. Like, yeah. uh, Chris, maybe I, I'd love to hear your take on. Well, no, I mean, I, I think you're exactly right. We have been a cloud company for yeah. a long time, right? And while it may be private clouds, right? Like Data Foundry. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think when you think about this infrastructure, this is really kind of that now we're third layer right. of right. convergence, yes. right? Where we are starting to put infrastructure together that's going to allow us to deploy code faster yeah. um, with you know better quality. So mm-hmm. test automation frameworks that we can share, <clears throat> um, deployment processes we can share. Uh, there's we've seen a convergence of data centers, right? Where we have you know taken you know closed you know acquired data centers and put them into one. And so it really is a journey. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not the journey isn't we're going to the cloud. The journey is about maturing our cloud oh, yeah. to start being to start being able to scale and do things faster and more repeatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and I'd like to point out that, we, like you said, we've been doing um, cloud for a long time, mm-hmm. but you know, what is cloud? Like, what is mm-hmm. that? Yeah. You know, we, we've been um, trying to get multiple computer systems and multiple things to kind of work together for a long time. And we have, we've built our own clusters. Mm-hmm. We've actually built our own wheels yeah. um, over and over again. In fact, we have these things spread all across PDI. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, at the same time, other companies have been building um, a reusable cloud. It's something that we could jump on and, and really take full advantage of. Yeah. So with data, we're taking advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're also moving our loyalty systems um, fully into the more of the public cloud. Yeah. Um, so to take full advantage of all of that, and even at the data level, we no longer will have to keep clusters of you know, database servers. It'll look like one giant server to us once again, just like it did at the beginning of our career. The foundation has to exist, right? So that, yeah. you know, we, we call it a cloud, right? Whether that's our public, that's right. private cloud or public, right? But it's kind of like you said, it's that automation. How do, we, how do we deploy faster? How do we make sure that it's scalable and robust? Right. And, and, you know, we're a global company, right? So we have customers that... Uh, say, well, I need my data to sit in this particular country, right? Or that particular right. country. Right. If GDPR, there's all these different things. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that combination of private cloud infrastructure that we have and the public clouds kind of allows us this flexibility for us and our customers to, you know, still go fast, right? Have a robust infrastructure, but, but being able yeah. to do it globally. That's right. So every lob, every line of business has got its own convergence score happening. Yeah. And then we're now... You know, we kind of start talking about that next layer of convergence, which is how do we become a PDI, you know, uh, mm-hmm. enterprise platform of products that mm-hmm. we can move between. We've talked a little bit about that, but 
you're right. You asked a really good question about how do we determine what is what what should we stitch together? Where yeah. does it make sense? Yeah, that's the thing. How do you how do you keep it real? Uh, it's easy for all of us to um, uh, I don't know imagine the things that we like, yeah. uh, <laughs> and um, um, but ultimately it's going it has to come down to what really can be implemented, what brings value, right. um, what has some kind of ROI associated with it, and what has legs that will take us into the future. Right? We talked about product convergence, we talked about platform convergence, but there's also this data center infrastructure convergence, right? which is a lot of our workloads are moving to either our private cloud or public. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes a lot of sense to leverage what's already out there and not reinvent the wheel. Right? Now, yeah. I think you guys have done a ton of that. Oh yeah, yeah, and that, that's going back to what you were talking about earlier. There are things that we can um, bring together, and and the data is definitely one of them. Yeah. And AWS, which we've we've been leveraging for the data, um, is a good tool. Yeah. Uh, it's really quite good. Um, we also have um, systems that are in Azure, and we also have systems that are up at Google. Sure. Um, but the idea is, what do, how do we choose um, the you know the technologies, and how do we bring them together so that we're not trying to do everything at once. How do you guys do it? Is it best of breed or what's the thinking process behind that? Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, what it comes down to is what proves itself. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, um, you you take a product, you um, you you make it do something valuable, mm -hmm. uh, and then it's basically a beauty contest between yeah. the between the different things and yeah. you see which one, um, you know, succeeds. Um, so my next kind of favorite topic is innovation, mm -hmm. right? I'm pretty passionate about that. And, I've, you know, there's all, all kinds of stuff happening in innovation. I'd love to kind of dive into that you know, yeah. a little bit. Well, let's do this, actually, because I know it's your favorite topic. Uh -oh. Why don't we kick it back to you first and mix right. up a little bit. Okay. And, and you kind of share your perspective of innovation and what yeah. that means for you. you know, what it means yeah. you. Well, yeah, I mean, innovation is definitely dear to my heart. It's just been, you know, ever, ever since I was a kid, I was tinkering with things. I was trying to, you know, just kind of almost inventing new stuff, right? Whether that's, you know, me trying to make sure that I can watch TV at night without my parents not, you know, catching me so I would, you know, fashion a device that kind of alerts me, right? It's almost like the IoT stuff, right? So there's always been things that I've been very kind of interested in tinkering with and, and creating new new sort of solutions, if you will, right? And I think it's very close to innovation. Uh, but what I find really interesting with PDI is that, I don't know if a lot of people know, there's a ton of innovation happening mm -hmm. at PDI already, right? So we have engineering teams and product management teams who are every day creating new versions of our applications, improving you know, the products and making everything better. Um, and so um, that's innovation, right? Right. Now, so we're, we're doing what, you know, what people call sustaining innovation all the time, right? Um, and I think we're also doing breakthrough innovation, right? You know, we need to do more of that for sure, right? And so I think to me is how do we take technology to the next level? How do we leapfrog what do we have today and built the next generation of technologies, right? And that's really kind that's of right. what, I'm, mm -hmm. what I'm very excited about, you know? Um, you know, I know for, for MCS, you know, your history, um, you know, you guys have been innovative for years, patents, data. So talk a little bit just about the, the patents that, you know, we hold <coughs> today and then, and why, you know, why would we go get a patent, go through the effort to do that? Mm -hmm. um, and then <coughs> maybe a little bit more about the innovation that we're seeing with the data lake and kind of that, that sure. data story. Sure. Yeah, so recently we, we went and got a patent on um, a UI framework, mm -hmm. uh, which was you know, a year-long process. It was um, a pretty interesting process to go through. And we did that in order to um, basically protect a, a huge amount of innovation that had occurred over a 10-year period. You know, as we look at the next generation of employees are here and they're Gen Z, yep. right? And mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're going to not work for companies yeah. that don't leverage technology well, right? If it's right. hard to work, at your business, they're not going to come oh, up for you. Have no. It so, looks too old. No way. I don't want to right. work here. Right? So how do we think yeah. about you know, the consumers of our different products yeah. in a way that, you know, and, and MCS is interesting because it truly is a consumer product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People want it to be fast. It's got yeah. to be easy. They're right. It's it, cool. It, and you know, what's interesting is that we're, you know, so we, we are kind of on this path of digitizing mm -hmm. our customers' businesses, if you will, right? But that's only the beginning, right? The next wave is really automating everything, right? right. Making smarter applications, right? Leveraging, these are buzzwords, right? But AI, machine learning, they're mm -hmm. sometimes somewhat overused sometimes, but the point is we will create these new class of applications. They're smart, they're that's autonomous, right? right? Yeah. They make decisions on their own, whether that's how do I dispatch a driver, right? Without a human having to do it, or how do I place an order 
right, to optimize my, my margin, right? Mm -hmm. But I think when you think about smarter applications as well, I mean, you're right, seeing it across all the lines of business. And, you know, with MCS, a big push right now, you know, we you know, just closed the Swift IQ mm -hmm. acquisition mm -hmm. earlier in the year <clears throat> and really looking at how we think about the business a little different and maybe mm -hmm. do more with the consumer packaged goods, mm -hmm. you know, uh, providers, you know, the CPGs. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's been a really interesting story for you guys. It has been. Uh, and, and also the realization that many of the things that we um, have come in contact with through acquisition have mm -hmm. turned out to be different flavors of what we were already doing. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Swift IQ um, is primarily concerned with retail data. Mm -hmm. Well, is there any other place in PDI that has anything to do with retail data? Well, right? Right? Yeah. And so at, uh, at MCS, same thing. Uh, we, yeah. you know, we, yeah. um, we, 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 come in contact with the next um, you know, great invention. And, and Swift IQ is an example of innovation in and of itself. Um, we bring it in and then merge it with what we're doing. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. It is, I think, and, you know, as we look, like one of the things we've been doing a lot, we talk about stitching things together. Mm. And one place that we really have identified that makes a ton of sense to stitch together is that data capture kind of, or the oh, IoT yeah. services, yeah. right? We all have Endpoints like out there in the world, line of business, and all of us are trying to get that data from the endpoints, right, yeah. and yeah. right, and, and some of us have the same endpoints that we use, whether it's a POS, and we all want the transactional data. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great place to think about what should stitch, right? That's and, one. and what should be in a platform so we don't reduplicate it, because we should right. technically have every line of business, every product team, do the data capture, get the data from POS systems, yeah, ATGs. Right. Yeah. But how, why don't why not we have a common framework, right, mm -hmm. that can be used for all by all of them? And we essentially reuse it, right? So right. we can. It, to me, it's all let's let's go faster. How do we accelerate right. this business, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's be smart about where we invest our dollars, which means let's share services and systems among all the different lines of businesses, right? So I think that's really exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, you know what? It was great to see you guys. Thanks for joining yeah. me here in Alpharetta. Uh, I am so excited about 2020. You know, the challenges in front of us, the problems we get to solve, which is the great part of being an engineer. Is, is getting to solve those problems. Uh, you know, the, the tech we're gonna get to advance as we look ahead and um, the execution, right? To your point, the, the results we're gonna deliver at the end of the year. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, thanks. Yeah, great talking about it.